Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So today we are going to be drawing and painting. Oh, I've got a thing on my screen with this uh, pelican that you can see on my um, the side of the, the thing. I'm sorry, I'm just picking up my cable and plugging in my picture that I'm going to use as a reference. So I've got it up large next to me. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to be drawing and painting that pelican you see. So I'm going to start by drawing this on. I'm just going to get the basic shape. Oh, that's my little dog. I'll just open the door. He wants to come into the art room. <clears throat> come on in, Bear. In you come. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm going to start just by drawing his shape in. Oh, Bear, Bear. You going to come and say hello? Come on. Come and say hello to everyone. Okay, everyone, this is Bear. <laughs> this is little Bear. Say hello. Got to have a cuddle every time you come in, don't you? Yes? Okay. So I'm just going to start by getting his outline similar to what I see in the reference picture. I'm going to try and match the angles on on his um, neck. And I do love pelicans. They're quite, they're beautiful birds. And I like, I've ch chosen to just do a head picture just to take a lot of the stress of the feathers and all that sort of stuff out. Now his beak is almost as long as the whole picture. It just it almost goes to the bottom. You can see actually in my, uh, what am I going to do here? Hang on. I, it's reversed on the screen, I've just realised. So what can I do there? How can I fix that? <clears throat> well, what I can do is actually... Um, I might try and just bear with me a second, Pete. So I am going to get into my photos, and I'm going to do. I'm going to draw it again, but I'm going to do it this time. I'll do it in reverse on my paper, so it looks like it's going the right way for you guys. There we go. I'll do that. Hang on. Whoops. Hang on. Just got to do that, and then I'll re redraw the, the whole picture. But this time I'll do it, um, I'll erase that, so that way at least you'll have it going the right direction. So I'll just erase that quickly, like that. There we go. And I'll just draw it in reverse, because that's just easier for you guys to see and follow along. Because I just realised my screen was flipped, which is a little bit annoying. There we go. Righto, so, start again. And this time have him, his neck goes down this way, like that, and he's got quite a long sort of a head that way, and then his beak is almost the full length of the of the picture. And he's got a the curve on his beak at the end, like that. <coughs> and I'm just going to, I'm not going to do the details on yet. It goes back a little bit and then it gets a bit deeper and it goes all the way up. And you can see his chest, his neck is touching his beak all the way up. Righto. So now I can start with it. So I've got the outside shape in. His beak actually probably could be a bit, it needs to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer because even in the photo it does go almost to the bottom there. So I'll erase that little bit there like that and take that almost to the bottom. Whoops, get rid of the, that bit. Let's have a look. Okay, so now do his eye in and you can see his head actually goes to the top of the page so I'm going to do that and he's got a hairy back of his neck so I can change the shape a little bit now as I go I've got the basic shape in and now I add the details which is the fun bit so I do that and you can see I'm, I'm I apologize for my uh, webcam I'm having I'm trying to set it up right <laughs> it's getting there um, okay 
So I'm going to use this eraser because it's a bit neater. It's like that. Okie doke. <clears throat> I have a sip of my coffee because I need my coffee. Excellent. Okay, so his eye goes back about there. Then it comes down on an angle. That, so I'm just marking in where the beak, the back of the beak is. Hair in my mouth. And then, okay, so I've got that basic shape of his face. Do his eyes. And come in there like that. So that's his, oh, then I'll draw, draw, draw his pupil and everything in in a minute. Like that. Because he's got beautiful colours. That's why I wanted to draw this bird's face. Because he's got beautiful colours around his eye. And then his beak comes down here. It comes up on a little bit of an angle. And then goes all the way down to the bottom of his beak. Like that. Okay. Actually, it comes down a bit longer. It comes down like that. And he's got another line coming down here. So I'm just going to draw in the basic lines, getting everything where I want it. He's got a lighter colour bit coming down here, like that. He's got some detail under his eyes and around. He's got a line around the top of his eye, which I will fill in with, I can, don't actually have to draw that in, I can fill that in with darker paint as I go. And I'm going to draw, just rough that outline up, just a little bit, like that, because you can see he's got rough feathers down his neck and everywhere. So I'll rough those up so he doesn't have just flat lines on his body. And then he's got his body feathers are quite rough and spiny looking almost. I'll just go do the tip of his beak. It's longer than it comes down below there like that. And it's yellow like that. And then there's also yellow on the orange on the bottom. He's got beautiful colours. Okie doke. So I'm happy with that as a sketch. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to... Okay, do that. Have another sip of me coffee and then start to get me watercolours ready. Okie doke. So I'm going to give him a spray. I've got a... I use an old bottle that I've got sitting around that I use to spray my watercolours. And I've got a bit of gouache there as well. So I just give them a, a spritz. So they're nice and ready to use. I'll use a little bit of gouache as well, just because I might need it for highlighty bits here and there. Whoops, don't want to knock my camera. Okay, grab my cloth. I always have a bit of cloth in my hand as well, just a bit of kitchen towel, because I clean my brush, I wipe my brush off quite a lot. So we're going to start with the background. No, we're not. I'm not going to start with the background. I'm going to start with the eye. And his eye's a greeny colour. It's a little bit green. So... I'm going to get a little bit of Iridian or a little bit of Cobalt, actually. A little bit of Cobalt teal. A little bit of Cobalt teal and I'll add a little bit of yellow just to yellow it up a little bit more. Cobalt teal. I'll bring my... Well, you can't see my palette there. Okay. I'll have to make this screen... Change my screen a little bit when I, as I get, get it laid out a bit better. Okay, so I'm just going to pop in... The eye. I've got a bit of eraser on there. So just pop that first layer of little bit of little hint of green that's around his eye in. It's actually got a little bit under his eye as well in the feather colour. Right. And then he's got a grey around the bottom and this part of his beak. So I'm going to colour that in now because I can stay away, let that eye dry a little bit. So I'm going to do that by mixing blue and brown. So I'll go cobalt blue and burnt umber. Makes a beautiful grey. Cobalt blue and burnt umber makes a greeny bluey grey. And I'm going to take that 
around anywhere that's going to be the darker area on his beak. So I'll take that right around there, up and behind his eye. And it's just a very diluted wash at the moment. A very diluted wash. Take that down there, up the top of his beak. Then you can see it comes down. And I keep my brush strokes in the direction of the beak. So I take that right down to the bottom of his beak. And it stops at about there. Okay, so we've got that darker bit on the bottom just blocked in. I will make it even darker. And I'm actually going to add this also to... I'm going to leave white. He's got... Everything <coughs> Excuse me. You can see his feathers have got... Oh, Bear Bear. That's my little dog. Excuse me, Bear Bear. Don't sook. Don't be a sookie. Okay, and I'm going to leave white of the paper for the white of the pinny feathers that he's got. So I'm just going to leave, I'm going to do a very, very light wash of this grey colour, leaving gaps for the white. Because the white of the paper, ideally, should be the white of the feathers that is on the feathers. He's got his wing feathers. So I'm just going to do it go around the outside like that, just to suggest lines going in the direction that I want them. like that. They don't have to be precise. They can be, watercolour you can be a little bit loose and by loose I mean you know it doesn't have to be exactly like the photo. You can use a little bit of your own exaggeration kind of thing like your own impression. Okay so now I'm going to go around his eye. That should be dry now. So I'm going to go a little bit of orange. So I'm going to go a bit of transparent pyrrole and a little bit of red with that as well, so I'm going to go pie roll red into that as well. So I'd make it a reddier orange. And I'm going to take that around his eye now. Just for the first layer, it'll dry back a little bit paler. Because I'll add layers for detail over the top. I'm going to leave it, as you can see, I'm staying a little bit away from the edge of the, the eye. Go onto that grey a little bit like that. And I can take this same orange. So you can see it's a bit ready, more ready on his on his um, eye. I'll change that, I'll darken that up in a minute. So I'll take this grey, this orange, so down along the grey. As you can see it comes up and around onto that part of the beak there up the top and he's actually got that grey on his top of his beak as well which I didn't really notice so I better have a look at that. I'll drag that up and I can smudge that out a bit so I just added water to my brush there just to make it flow a bit more <coughs> and he's got beautiful bright yellow on the bottom of his beak. Oops, I've got a bit of green accidentally in that but it doesn't really matter it's not the end of the world. Okay, so I'll just brighten up the tip of his beak there, like that. Righto, is it on the bottom as well? It is on the bottom as well, so I'll add that there, like that. Righto. So now, th this part of his beak is a bluish grey, so I'm just going to even dilute that grey that I made before with the Burnt Umber Cobalt Blue, dilute it right down and take that down onto this part of his beak. And I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm just going to, it's, it's almost just staining the paper a tea-ish colour. I'll take that right down into all of the areas, all the other areas that I've got lighter like that. And I'm, you can see I've left a couple of little light bits that I'm going to let that be the white of the paper. And I've got to go over this two or three more layers just to make sure 
<clears throat> that there's depth so it gives you dimension and and depth in the picture so I'll mix up some more burnt umber cobalt blue make a slightly stronger grey actually where's my <clears throat> excuse me um, might actually go ultramarine blue and burnt umber there we go that's a better darker grey so I'll do that and I'm now going to take that over the top and start to build up the depth into the and I can use this same blue grey that I've made I try not to use any watercolour blacks I make my own my own darks so this is um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber makes this beautiful dark blue that's almost black and I can start to build up darks and the more water you add the more pale it will be so I might actually dilute it a fraction more just so it's not quite so strong <clears throat> but for the second I'm just gonna go around where the very dark bits are around the outside so I'm gonna add more water to my mix now <clears throat> excuse my cough I've got a croaky throat today so I'm gonna add this so you can see I've diluted it's, it's just like one or two tones lighter now and I'm just going over the top that bottom layer is dry and I'm going to start to build up where you can see the shadows and darker parts of the picture so take that into there and now I'm going to drag that down because you can see it's darker to, along this part of his beak so I'm going to darken up following the direction of the beak take that darker shadowy bit with that grey that I mixed <coughs> let's have a look yeah that's looking all right and I could also take that you can see how the line of his beak use the very tip of my brush to take that to darken that X ex, that X to that line I was gonna say external line but it's internal it's not external take down his beak like that come right down there and then I can do that onto his beak as well like that and I've got to darken up you can see he's got that dark bit at the top of the beak so I'll darken that up as well he's got it here a bit and it comes down where his nostril is got a line there all right I'm quite happy with that so far quite happy with that and he's got a little bit <clears throat> I'm gonna add a little bit of gold to his eye a little bit of quinacridone gold to his eye just to add a little bit of interest and I'm going to take that down onto his beak as well actually that's a ready color so I'm going to go a bit of Venetian red I'm going to put a bit of Venetian red there because that's a beautiful color that Venetian red I'm going to pop that that comes in onto his beak as well I've got to dilute it a bit more than that so I'll dilute that a little bit coming down onto his beak there like that and then there's a little bit up there a little bit coming down here that Venetian red is one of my favorite colors I have to say it is a gorgeous color and I can add he's got that on his beak as well coming down towards here <clears throat> so I'm going to dilute that a little bit and then add that very diluted I'm going to wet my brush now and just blend that out take it down here drop it into there and let it flow around a little bit like that and I'm going to go back into my darker blue and I'm going to let that flow into there a little bit because you can see it sort of creates that same soft effect so I literally just put that blue on top of the red because it'll go a purpley color anyway which is fine which is what I want 
okie doke and I've got to darken up even more dark and add some texture to this part of his beak because he's got little lines going in the direction of his beak so I'm just using the same color I'm just, just you can see it's just a little bit less water so a little bit less diluted and I take that all the way down the length of his beak just leaving little gaps because that is the bit that opens out like a net to catch the fish this comes out really really large so it can carry quite big fish in his beak like a big net like a hammock almost <laughs> and then I'm just gonna add some more detail some strength I'll strengthen this color around there and I've got to get some more ultramarine blue burnt umber make some more dark brown Oop, get some more burnt umber so yeah that's my go-to for darks is burnt umber ultramarine blue burnt umber cobalt blue so now this is almost pure pigment very tiny little bit of water just enough to get it onto the paper and I'm going to darken up the darkest darks just to help with that three-dimensional look and you work watercolors you work light to dark so you start with your palest shades and then you work your way to dark and then your final dark so the darkest you can you can get so he's very dark here and you can see he's got quite a lot of gold in the feathers on his head so that's going to be fun to try and do just got to add a little bit of a line there he's got little dots like little pinny feathers just down here so I'll pop those just add dots over the top so you can see the other layers the pale more pale layers underneath so I'll do that and it just helps to add to the detail so pop that in and he's very very dark directly under there where it touches where he sort of goes up against his um, feathers and now I can start to add also leaving being careful to leave some of the white of the paper because he does have you can see the white on his feathers so I want to leave that the white of the paper it's like he's, he's been in the water and he's wet and he's got shine on his feathers which is like a bright white so I'm just going to follow the direction of the feathers that I see in the photo that I got from Unsplash I use uh, my reference photo came from unsplash.com which is a fantastic royalty free website I will when I do my details in the description I'll add that website so you know where I get my ref references from um, and they've got a, an amazing range so I'm just again following the, the directions of the feathers and I'll build that up darker and darker as I go now I'm gonna start with I'm gonna add a little bit of a darker red I might even go a crimson I'm gonna add some crimson into around his the edge of his eye I just want to strengthen up that red around his eye it's an orangey red but I'm going a crimson I'm just using a bit of my own um, imagination here just to strengthen it I just want to pronounce that red around his eye a little bit and as you can see he's a little bit I can add some water to that that'll dilute it down I can drag it out a bit and it will draw dry a tone or two lighter like that <coughs> okay I'm so I'm happy with that I'm having a quick look at my big screen and now he's got lots of I can use blues for the shadows but I'm going to start with the, or, the yellow on his head and I'm going to go <clears throat> a yellow ochre so I'm going to get some yellow ochre on my palette I've got to get a palette camera for you guys so you can see what I'm doing okay so get some yellow ochre and I'm going to dilute it right down get it really watery actually you know what I'm going to do I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to wet the paper the paper on his head anywhere that the yellow ochre is going to be you can see I've got a little bit of red pig red pigment is so strong even when you clean your brush unless you clean it perfectly you're going to end up with a little bit of pigment on your brush and I use I tend to use one brush for everything <laughs> I don't swap my brushes so now I'm just going to drop that yellow ochre in on top 
of that wet water, of that water, and let it flow around. And that, the water helps to carry it and disperse it for me. Like that. And it comes down around the bottom of his beak. So I'm going to now clean my brush, take the moisture out of it, and drag the edges like that. And I'm going to go over that with another layer of dark, of slightly stronger pigment because I want that to also have feathery lines in it because you can see it's got darker feathery lines. For the shadows on his white, I'm going to use blue and I'm going to use cerulean blue. I'm just going to dilute it like a lot. So it's just tainted, like just tinted water almost like that. And I'm going to put that into the shadow areas on his feathers on his neck. So anywhere that there's shadows on the white and you'll see when I do the background, that will really pop. The colour will really pop. Um, I'll take it down the back of his neck. Because you can see he's got shadows on the back of his neck. So I'll just take that down there. And you can see it's only just a hint of colour on the paper. Right, so I'm going to go on with the background now. And I'm going to go ultramarine. Just pure ultramarine. But what I've got to do is I'm going to wet the background. So I'm going to clean my brush thoroughly. And take go around the outside of the bird leaving where I want to add feather details after so sort of cutting around and you watch what happens so I've made that paper very wet and now I'm going to drop in the ultramarine and look at it go I love that that's what I love about watercolor pop that onto the paper and it just takes on a life of its own I'm going to leave little gaps all right, so now I want his feathers to be rough on the back of his neck. So I'm just going to cut in a little bit while that's still wet. And I really made the paper very wet, so I've got a, a fair bit of work time with it. And you can see that makes his detail pop. The colour, the light, the, like his lighter lights, it makes them really pop. Okay, so I'm going to clean my brush. Go back to, I'm actually going to lift that top the tape I want to add that blue to the top like that just like that so I've got rid of that top tape okay now I'm going to wet the paper again wet the paper oops I can stick that down just gently 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 above there like that so wet my paper take it right down around the top of the beak oops and I'm using core watercolors because they are they're, they're my they're my go-to's now they're my favorites they're strong vibrant beautiful pigment and it does act differently I usually use Sennelier and um, Schmink they're my favorites but um, I've found with the core watercolours, I'm having a lot of fun because they're just stronger, they're more vibrant and they're great for skin tones. I've been doing a lot more portraiture and I find they are very good for that kind of thing because I can get nice, nice strong tones. Okay, that's that. <clears throat> so now I've got to go back in, clean my brush got to tidy up this line here you can see I've got it onto the beak a bit and I've lost that sharp line so that's fine I can add that back actually I can add that back later you can use masking fluid I don't um, to protect areas but um, I'm just going to clean that off with a bit of with my brush just add water and that'll lift off anywhere that it's gone that I don't want it to be and I'll tidy that up after whoops you can see I've got um, my hand on there just while that's still wet I can drag that around right I'm gonna leave that for a second and now I'm gonna go back into his head and I'm gonna use a bit of nickel azo which is a gorgeous goldy green color and I'm gonna add that 
onto his feathers on his head and start to strengthen these and you can see the under I'm going to do leaving gaps like I did on his back on his body so that you get the texture of the feathers and the underneath you can still see coming through like that I'm just using the very tip of the brush the very tip like that and it comes down and around the bottom of his neck a little bit so I'm going to add a bit of that onto his beak as well just down to that part of his beak righto and I can also take this down like that and put a little bit on his eye I'm going to go a bit of a really deep purple into the pupil on his eye and I'm going to darken up this bit around the edge as well again using the very tip of my brush just to get make that pupil a fraction bigger like that all right I'm going to darken up using that really deep purpley color too just to strengthen some of these dark darks like that okay let's have a look he's looking all right I'm happy with that <coughs> and now I can go these dark darks I've got to let that paper dry a little bit um, I can do work to the internal parts though and just where it's very dark now I can add this really deep purple and I've added a bit of brown to it to make it almost black and it's very little water so it's almost pure pigment I've got to stay out of that blue on the background because I don't want it to flow everywhere <coughs> like that take it down here righto so now I can get some detail I've got to be so careful with that background it's nearly dry it's nearly dry I can only just see a little bit of a sheen on it I'm going to add some more of the cobalt uh, sorry the blue diluted the cerulean blue to the shadows on his neck so I'm going to add a ton of water get a little bit on my brush and whoops no that's too strong I'll add a bit more water and start to add that shadow in so I'm using a different blue to the background add that shadow into his neck right up along his beak like that and it comes all the way up here and then it goes down the back and I'm gonna go at the back I can add a bit of white even a bit of white acrylic or a bit of um, gouache to that background because I want to get some fine sort of feathery marks on his feathers on his neck just having a quick look at the screen <coughs> and I also add a bit of gouache I think it's dry enough now I'm going to go back in and take back some of this white that I've lost and rough up these feathers around the back of his head and down along the length of his neck all the way down so that's just white gouache is just like an opaque watercolor it'll cover any mistakes that you've made or if you've lost any white you can add highlights back with it really handy for just these sort of occasions because I don't use masking fluid so if I've lost any light bits I just add them back with a touch of gouache I'm also going to add a little highlight onto his eye onto his pupil like that I've got to add some more orange some bright orange as well and I'm going to get some light around the top of his head just to get that line back to make that look softer like that and you can see that just lifts it a little bit just softens 
a little bit like that. I can also get this line back on the top of his beak. Just got to get a bit more gouache on there on my brush. And I'm using Sennelia gouache. It's a nice quality gouache. Alright, that just takes that line back a little bit for me. Alright, let's have a look. And I'm also going to add a little bit of white back just here and here. You can barely even notice it, but it's just enough to just lift a highlight back. There we go. Get a little bit of that around his eye as well. Just a little. And it's just looking and seeing what you can see, what details you can see. I'm going to add some more orange onto his beak. So this time I'm going to go... Uh, I am going to go... I'm going to clean that bay in my palette and grab a bit of orange. Needs to be brighter orange, like a red orange. Might go a bit of pyrrole orange, so I'll grab that. A bit of pyrrole orange. And I'm going to strengthen that up on his beak. That stronger orange down the bottom there. Like that. Because it is a much stronger orange colour down the bottom there. And it actually comes down here, doesn't it? have a look. Okay, it does come down there and then up his beak a bit. All right I'm happy with that. Let's have another look. Can add a bit of that more around his, a bit more of that around his eye. I might even take it onto that feathery bit there. All right and I'm going to take a bit of that cerulean blue onto his beak just there and I'm going to just see that tiniest dob and now I'm going to wet my brush and drag it drag it down for the shadow onto that that bit there and it just tints that little bit of his beak a little bit more <coughs> grab I'm going to go back onto the feathers around the back of his head now and start to add get that highlight back that I'd lost and rough up those feathers at the back come down onto there you can see where he's got sort of I've got odd bits that need to just be defined a little bit more. So I'll just put those back where I'd lost them. Come that all the way down like that. Righto. I'm going to go a bit of a bright yellow onto the tip of his beak. Just to define that a bit more. There we go. It looks greedy on my camera, but it is a bright yellow, I promise. Um, take that right down there. Now let's have a look. What else? What else do I need to do? I'm pretty well there, I think. I've just got to, I've got to try and get a bit more bright white back along the top of his beak. So I'll just go back in with pure gouache, try and keep my brush as straight as I can, just to get that line back. I might pop a little bit onto the tip of his beak as well because you can see there's a little bit of a light. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, I think. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to sign it and then I'm going to grab a bit of dark blue and I'll sign it over here on his feathers. So you can't even see that I've signed it like that. And then I'm going to take off the back paper that's the sticky tape. Whoops. And this gives you a clean line around the outside edge. Like that. Just like oops, and it fell. <laughs> there we go. So there you go. So that is today's little pelican painting. And you can see it's quite oops. Quite small. Gotta make it level. Whoop, what have I done? There we go. You can see it's quite small. It's only the size of my hand. So if I put my hand next to it, you can see. So yeah, so that was a bit of fun. So thank you for watching, everyone. 
Um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, click like and subscribe. Click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release a new video. I'll be trying to do a lot more lives. I also do lots of shorts, um, like so time lapses, so you, don't have, you can just watch it in fast time. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Anyway, thank you so much. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you guys next video. Okie doke. Bye.